Joining us once again, James Rubin, an adjunct professor at Columbia University School of International and Public Affairs and a former Assistant Secretary of State in the Clinton administration, and Garrick Utley, president of the Levin Institute of the State University of New York and a former NBC News foreign correspondent and anchor. Welcome to both of you. Nice to Thank see you, you again. So do you, Jamie, expect um, a deepening intervention in Yemen um, in the coming months as President Obama has vowed, has promised to follow through uh, in terms of cracking down on al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula? I do expect an increased focus on Yemen. Yemen is a difficult challenge for a number of reasons. I think people might uh, imagine it as a combination of some of the failed state qualities of Afghanistan and the difficult acceptance uh, that Saudi Arabia uh, went through before it accepted that it was in a war against al-Qaeda. The Yemen government recognizes the presence of al-Qaeda, but like Saudi Arabia, they're reluctant to have a full-fledged open alliance with the United States in this challenge. So we have Arab politics, we have a civil war there, we have a failed state quality, and trying to uh, exploit all that we have uh, a new uh, effort by al-Qaeda, and so it's a difficult combination of foreign policy and, and counterterrorism. Right, and Garrick, mm -hmm. the, the Yemeni government has come out and said it doesn't want direct U.S. involvement, that it's capable mm -hmm. of rooting out al-Qaeda mm -hmm. and taking care of this problem by itself. Yet, as you were saying, Jamie, it is a weak, fractured government. Its writ doesn't uh, run mm -hmm. large throughout the country. It's also deeply unpopular with the Yemeni uh, people. Mm -hmm. Um, well, is it capable of taking on this problem without direct U.S. Not involvement? Really. Well, first of all, it's not so much a failed state as a non-state. It's like Somalia, which may be a failed state, but this is the Yemeni tradition of tribes, of villages, etc. And the government of President Saleh, who's been there, what, about 30 years right now, I mean, he's just sort of ruled in that uh, sort of diminished way. Uh, I think what the issue really here is, um, is that, again, it shows the limits of this so-called war, or maybe it is a war on terrorism. The President Obama is now using that term again. Are we going to send troops there? No. We don't have the troops, and, and, and they really, that's off the, off the table. But we have covert operations going Oh, you'll have covert Yemen operations. Already, right? Are we going to go and do a battle for the hearts and minds of the people with, with extensive economic aid and assistance? Well, who do you deliver to? It's not that the Yemenis are fighting this. These are al-Qaeda cells, or a cell that has been formed there. You're looking for the proverbial needle in the haystack. So intelligence operations, absolutely right. Our national security people said the other day that they were surprised, surprised by this connection. They didn't think the al-Qaeda operatives in Yemen were at that level of sophistication or ability to deliver a would-be bomber on a plane headed for, uh, for Detroit. Uh, but they were able to do that. So I think at the end of the day, what Yemen is going to be is just one more of this, this patchwork quilt of places where terrorists can operate from. And we have not come up with a, a method of really dealing with that. So, J Jamie, in terms of U U.S. involvement, I mean, it is a very fine line. I mean, we we've seen what's happened in places like Pakistan, where the United States has carried out a drone attacks, and so the our agenda isn't obviously the agenda of these local governments. How do we deal with that in the Arabian Peninsula w with well, states like Yemen and and also I think we need Somalia? the subtlety to recognize that America is not popular in Yemen right now, but we also need the wisdom to understand that our assistance in the form of not just military uh, intelligence and counterterrorism, but actual foreign assistance has gone up and down in Yemen. And I think now you're going to see an effort to put together internationally a package that says, okay, can we help the Yemen government win back some of the support of its people, avoid an implosion in their rebellion in the north and, and the difficulties they're having in the south? Can we put together a combination of using what President Obama has said are all the tools of national power, diplomacy, politics, economics, foreign assistance, and yes, intelligence operations, and probably uh, some real military to military assistance. All of these things need to be done if we're not going to have a situation several months or a year from now where another uh, attack occurs in this country and people do what they did in the case of Afghanistan. Is point it back to a location that we took our eye off the ball. But again, the fact is the fellow who uh, was involved in this was not from Yemen. He was from Nigeria. We know that some of the leading al-Qaeda operatives there, whatever they call themselves, uh, were not from Yemen. Uh, one of them was born in the United States. Uh, so this has become this new kind, or maybe not new, but in Yemen, 
new kind of, of reality that is there. And I very much question how much the, the Yemeni government could really deal with this despite any amount of aid that we're going to give it. There always are places to hide out. You can operate. They've had Al-Qaeda Al -Qaeda going back to 2001, had a cell in Hamburg for the 2001 uh, 9-11 uh, attacks. So I think we really have to rethink in the public mind as to what this so-called war on terrorism is. It's a war without front lines. The only front line in this war are the security checks at their airports. That's mm. the front line. But and if you breach that front line, you have a problem, which nearly happened in Detroit. But I don't see us being able to do very much in Yemen. Uh, that's going to really turn the situation because it'll pop up in some other country. Mm. Do you see the ch challenges in the Arabian Peninsula when it comes to dealing with al-Qaeda? Uh, are they very different from the, the challenges that we face in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Pakistan? Well, I do think what's different is that in this particular part of the world, Yemen, uh, the, this is the place where Osama bin Laden's father came from. This is the place where uh, the anti-Western uh, Muslim extremism sort of has a home. And so I think we're going to have to show extreme subtlety. But in many ways, this was uh, a wake-up call to again develop the sense of urgency about the war on terrorism, that it's not possible to sustain every single day of the year, no matter how hard you try, no matter how much focus you put on it. There's always a relaxing of the bureaucratic uh, cooperation. And I think because of this uh, missed uh, attack, which could have been much, much worse, we're going to see walls drop again. We're going to see bureaucracy fight harder again to work together and to get the job done. And there's going to be an ebb and flow in these things. It's the nature of human behavior, but we're lucky in the sense that uh, the bomb didn't go off, and I think the, the refocus, the re-effort uh, that's going to be made to, to do this much, much harder will take place. And right. it also means that for President Obama, the fact that he has been out in public so much, hardline talking about war on terrorism, he's got to defend, we've said it before, say it again, his national security credentials or he will be torn apart by the Republicans. And that's what's driving that this week in Washington. All right, Gary Cutley, Jamie Rubin, thank you very much thank for joining you. us.